I didn't date much in high school. I was very interested in dating in my growing up years, and uh, the feeling just wasn't mutual. It just wasn't. And I, I, I thought, what I need to figure out is, what do women want? And, and, and rather than consulting any women, I tried to figure it out on my own. And, and, and the conclusion I came to was that women want a man who can do Star Wars impressions. <laughs> Obviously. And the impression that I do well is the, uh, the, in the, the snow planet, the uh, creatures, they rode through the snow like horses, the uh, kangaroo rats on steroids, those are the tauntauns. That's right, here's my impression of the tauntaun. Here we go. <clears throat> I didn't date much in high school. <laughs> I married an extrovert, someone who likes to think her thoughts on the outside. I'm more of an introvert myself. I like to think my own thoughts in here. And uh, a lot of introverts and extroverts get married, don't they? Because it works out pretty good, because one likes to talk and the other has to listen. <laughs> That's right. And if you're an extrovert, you need to hear what I'm about to say. It's, it's, uh, this might change your life, actually. We introverts, we think you're fascinating. We do. We love your level of detail in your stories. We do. But we've only got so much room up here. And then it starts to clog up with your data. And then we have to go to our happy place to cope. For me, that's Star Wars, the little place in my head where I go to respite from her onslaught of data. She'll be like, did you see Jenny last week in church? No, why? Well, she was wearing a pink blouse with concentric circles, reminiscent of an exploding supernova. Her jeans were modest and tasteful. The color of deep blue, gemstones on the belt line, sapphires, onyx, precious stones, textures, lighting, scents, hidden feelings, spiritual vibes, choirs of angels singing over the earth, black holes, alternate universes, pretty shoes. Are you listening? <laughs> when you extroverts ask that question. Were you listening? <laughs> what was I saying? Everything! And then my brain blew up. <laughs> it burned. <laughs> Some of you want to laugh at this, but you're sitting by that special someone right now. I understand. Laugh later. I'm Darren, I'll be your comedian this evening. I, uh, what can I tell you about myself? I'm, uh, I'm an allergy sufferer. Any allergy sufferers out there? Yeah? I'm allergic to two things, organic and inorganic matter. <laughs> Didn't think I had allergies. Didn't think I had them. I just thought I had a really bad cold since preschool. So my mom, she used to treat the problem. She used to hose me down with Vicks VapoRub which she liked a little too much on me. The air above me always had this distorted look to it all the time. Yeah, I get on the school bus, all the kids got emotional, like, instantly. A girl tried to hug me in high school. She got cured of her asthma. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I went to the allergy clinic. That was fun. We're gonna give you 15 shots in your arm. I'm like, what a happy place. They shot formaldehyde in my arm to see if I'd react to it. I did, I put my doctor in a headlock. I was like, thanks for checking me for formaldehyde. Next time someone wants to store me in a jar with some frogs, I'm gonna say no. I'm allergic to poison. I'm allergic to wheat, eggs, milk, and sugar. I have nightmares about the muffin man. I'm allergic to dust mites. Any uh, dust mite allergies out there? Yeah, I see. Ni microscopic creatures that live in your pillow. I don't know what's worse, being allergic to dust mites or just knowing they exist. I'll wake up at like three in the morning. <laughs> They're here! I sleep with a helmet and a tick collar now. My wife has lost that love and feeling. Could be the Vicks VapoRub. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. 
I'm married. I have uh, four kids, four boys, all under the age of 21. Four boys, so. Yeah, thank you. Four boys. Not going to be able to resell my house at any time. Just going to burn it down when we're done. Want to bring them up right. Want to, you know, discipline the kids. Bring them up right. We're not very good at it. Well, well we, we, we weren't. I mean, we tried the timeout thing. That didn't seem to work. We tried the withdrawing privileges thing. That didn't seem to work. So we ended up going with the nuclear option. And, and we make out in front of our kids. It works very well. It works very well. And I go, you're not going to mow the lawn? You're not going to mow the lawn? Come here, honey. We're like, oh! Highly recommended. <laughs> they are a bit rambunctious, my kids. A little, a little crazy, you know. And I call my wife at home. She's dealing with those kids, so yeah. It's kind of weird if you call a spouse at home when they're dealing with the kids. It's it's kind of hard because you can't tell if she's talking to you on the phone or yelling at the kids. Do you know what I mean? It's like a schizophrenic conversation. I'll call her and say, hi, honey. She's like, hi, why are you bothering me now? Why are you picking right now to bother me? I wish you were here. <laughs> I wish you were here. Don't make me come over there. <laughs> Just drop it. What have you been up to? <laughs> Nothing, what are you up to? I love you. Do you really love me? No, 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 no! You still there? Yeah. No, 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 no! Boy, the kids are really acting up tonight, huh? What do you mean the kids are with my mother? <laughs> Their behavior has made me a little crazy. I did that to the poor woman. Life is crazy, though, isn't it, folks? Too much technology out there now. It's everywhere. You can't call a business anymore without a computer answering the phone. And the problem with computers answering the phone, they can't hear. <laughs> you call a business and the computer will say, please say your account number. And you say it, we didn't understand what you said. <laughs> please re-say your account number. And you say it, we still didn't understand you. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> please key in your account number. We're sorry, you must press pound after keying in your account number. Please rekey in your account number. Please verify your account number. Please sing and dance your account number. Imagine a sculpture chiseled out of limestone inspired by your account number. Describe it for us. We're sorry, you must press pound after describing your sculpture. Are you sure this is your account number? Let's start over. Please smoke signal your account number. Please telepathically blast your account number. All right, please hold the average wait time, 45 minutes, and then they play a song that you hate over and over and over again until your brain is bleeding. Then you get a human being on the phone. What's the first question they ask you? What's your account number? Have you ever just lost your mind at that point? I'm sorry, it takes an hour to get my account number. Please listen. La, 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 la. The first number is three. La, 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 la. The second number is seven. I'm sorry, you must press pound after threatening to hurt yourself. Please continue to listen. La, la. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to calm down. <laughs> you guys are a lot of fun. I feel like being vulnerable with you guys. Uh, I, uh, I had buck teeth growing up. That was fun. Buck teeth. Why do they call them buck teeth? You know, I've never seen a deer crossing the road. Just... Maybe that's why the deer are out on the road. They're trying to straighten their teeth. It's like... <laughs> the problem with buck teeth is no matter what you're feeling on the inside, you always have the same expression on the outside. <laughs> Happy. Mm -hmm. Sad. Mm -hmm. 
loving. Mm, asleep. So I got braces because I didn't want to look like a freak anymore. That really helped, yeah. Five pounds of metal in my face. I couldn't even swim. My head kept pointing toward True North. How many of you had braces? Quite a few of you. Oh, yeah. Well, then you remember the plaster forms that you got in the beginning, did you? Or, you know, you blocked that memory out. <laughs> If you don't know, they take a kit to fit you for braces, they take a couple of Frisbees, fill them full of wet plaster, shove them in your mouth to make a little plaster statue of your teeth. I was like, why? <laughs> so we know what your teeth look like. <laughs> I have an idea. Mm! And I wouldn't mind so much, but I gag really easy. Do any of you gag easy on like a toothbrush or something? I can gag on sunlight. <laughs> She shoved frisbees in my mouth. I was like, hawk, 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 hawk. The orthodontist got mad at me for that. He's like, hey, just try to relax. Who relaxes like that? I don't think he goes home after a long day's work. I could unwind. <laughs> <laughs> then they put rubber bands in the braces, right? And the problem with the rubber bands in the braces, they shoot out of your mouth at inopportune times. Anytime I'd yawn, ding, one would shoot out. My English teacher had to wear safety goggles. <laughs> Today, class, we're going to learn about war and... <laughs> I'm not proud of this, but one time I shot a rubber band into the orthodontist's mouth. <laughs> it was a bad day for him. <laughs> You need to brush more. And it... I said, oh, just try to relax. <laughs> well, I sure love it here. It's so beautiful here. And the people here are so just lovely and fun to talk to. And you're safety conscious here. I like that about you. I'm staying at a hotel with an indoor pool. That's very safety conscious, because you swim outdoors most of the year here. You die, I noticed that. <laughs> really safety conscious. You're swimming in the indoor pool, you look on the ceiling above you, there's, there's uh, sprinklers. <laughs> in case the water catches fire. Never thought of that. <laughs> Tables have umbrellas over them, you know, in case the sprinklers go off. You know. Nobody wants to get wet at the pool. <laughs> Never a lifeguard on duty, ever. I guess you guys are do-it-yourselfers. Just a do-it-yourself life preserver on the wall. <laughs> How's that gonna help me if I'm having trouble? Even if somebody threw it. I think he's drowning. <laughs> Zzz, splash. I think you're gonna have to come up for it. <laughs> it's not coming down to you. I'll talk to the manager. Or you got the hook on the wall with a 140-foot handle. I guess you can save someone's life without leaving the comfort of your hotel room. <laughs> I'm saving lives. I love the hot tub myself. Do you like hot tubs? Just to, yeah, that's how I thaw. I like the hot tubs. I don't know if you're like me though. If I'm sitting in a hot tub and a stranger sits in the water with me, I get really kind of a strange kind of nervousness about that. And I was trying to figure out, why do I get so nervous with strangers in the hot tub? And I think it's because complete strangers don't sit with me in the tub at home. <laughs> and if they did, I wouldn't treat them the same way, you know? Taking a bath at home, some dude walks in, sits down, I'm like, hey, where are you from? <laughs> Just your first time to my house? How interesting. So I've always been nervous about strangers in the hot tub. And, and I'm walking toward the hot tub, and, and there's four ladies sitting in the hot tub. And that makes me nervous, because you're ladies, you know. But to make it worse, I, I don't even know if you ladies are aware that you do this, but when you're in a pack together, you stare collectively. 
And it is the meanest thing you people do. Just four women, women going, who's this? You know, you know. So that made me walk faster than I should have. And I sat in the water with them too quick, just poof. Now you ladies might not understand this next part, just try to follow along, but guys, I had nine cubic feet of air trapped in my shorts. Like 90 PSI, you know, gripping the side of the hot tub, trying to look normal, like nothing. But if I didn't let go of that pressure, I was gonna flip upside down. But if I let all the pressure out at once, the blast would flip all the ladies upside down. So I came up with a quick plan. I thought I'm gonna squeeze the shorts gently. <laughs> and make little bubbles. <laughs> match the bubbles in the hot tub. You know? <laughs> Who's gonna notice that? <laughs> Everyone. Because it wasn't little bubbles, it was one gigantic nuclear bubble. <laughs> and all the women are <laughs> And I said the wrong thing. Pardon me. No, no, no. I was just trying to relieve the pressure. <laughs> the pressure in my shorts. I was, I was trying to make little bubbles. I was trying to make little bubbles. Hey, ladies, where are you going? Come back. The pressure's gone, lady. <laughs> oh. Hard to be me. <laughs> I was talking to my mom today. Yeah. I said, where are you going? I said, I'm on a dry bar comedy. She said, oh, be careful. <laughs> she said that, be careful. There's nothing against dry bar. It's just, she's, a very, she's a warrior mom. Do you have a warrior mom in your life? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like it, is there? <laughs> Everything is just, be careful, <gasps> be careful, <gasps> be careful. <gasps> Mom, for breakfast, can I have cereal? <gasps> be careful. <laughs> you could fall asleep and drown. <laughs> Wear your water wings. I was 15 before I realized that hot dogs don't come in tiny no-choke pieces. <laughs> the first time she felt comfortable letting me stay home alone, my wife went on a women's retreat for crying out loud. But she never raised her voice at us. Isn't that unusual? It was always just, I love you, be careful, I love you. Just an angel that floated down from heaven, married my father. I love you, be careful. <laughs> never raised her voice, never yelled. Well, except for that hour before company came over. <laughs> she became a different creature at that point. Like, clean, clean, everybody, clean! Clean if you value your life! <laughs> Strangely enough, he had disappeared. <laughs> the house was already clean. She wanted us to clean a place his company would never go, you know. Go up into the attic and comb the insulation fibers! <laughs> would you want company over that was that picky? We were looking through your vacuum cleaner bag. We found dirt. You people are disgusting. <laughs> we were dusting under doorknobs and vacuuming out closets. And she was cracking the whip and company showed up and she was an angel. <laughs> I was still a little tense. At the dinner table, one of the company's kids spilled their milk. I'm like, run for your life! <laughs> That's just evil. But we gotta watch out for evil in the world, my friends. Evil is everywhere. Got to watch out for it. You got to avoid it. There's even evil machines now. Oh, yes. Have you ever gone to the eye doctor and had to use the glaucoma checking machine? That's an evil machine. They check you for glaucoma by blasting air in your eye. When was that ever a good idea? Like, well, so we're going to check you for glaucoma. Just look in the people. We'll check you for glaucoma. Is this a read the chart kind of thing? Yeah, I actually don't see anything. <laughs> Well, so we're pretty sure you don't have glaucoma. You need an eyeball to have glaucoma. The good news is you'll never have glaucoma in this eye right here. It's an evil machine. Have you ever gone to the dentist and wrapped your lips around the saliva sucker? If you commit your lips to the saliva sucker, you're gonna have a hard time breaking that commitment. 
Shouldn't they turn the suction down if your belly button is whistling? I thought I was going to have gas in reverse. How do you explain that to your dad? He's like, did you cut the cheese? I think I put the cheese back together. I want to go home, but I seem to be attached to this chair. Evil. Even in some of our recreational areas, there's evil there you got to watch out for. These water slide parks, the summit, you know, the big death drop water slides, four story tall, straight down. Who invented this instrument of torture for recreation parties? Yeah, we want a ride that is all the horror of falling off a cliff, drowning, and losing a layer of skin at the same time. <laughs> Have fun, children. They say it's not dangerous, but it spits your body out into a small water coffin. <laughs> Notice that? It's not a pool. Because if you spit your body into a pool, you're moving, your body would skip. <laughs> <I'm> like, ah! <laughs> oh. They have two rules on that slide. The first rule is you've got to plug your nose. The second rule is you've got to cross your legs. The second rule is the most important rule. <laughs> Because if you don't plug your nose, water's spraying up your nose. But if you don't cross your legs, water is spraying out your nose. <laughs> That's evil. I love it here. My dad used to bring us out camping this way. Yeah, my dad brought us camping out here. You have a lot of lovely beautiful campgrounds around here. He didn't bring us to any of those. <laughs> he brought us to all the cheap ones. He brought us to the Camp Fun Maker. Have you done Camp Fun Maker? Oh, I'll tell you about it. It, <laughs> it seems like a high-tech campground, but because it has speakers making announcements, you think, oh, that's kind of Star Trek-y, I guess. But the, the, the speakers short out during the announcements because they're cheap. So you hear an announcement like, today at Camp Fun Maker, we're going to... <laughs> at the but never ever go by the or you might die here at Camp Fun Maker. So we're camping there and one night the sky turns green and it starts to really storm and then where I've come from that means we're going to have a tornado. I was really scared. And they wanted, we didn't have a tornado and they wanted to tell us that. I think what they wanted to say was there's no danger, no danger, repeat, no tornado, no tornado. Prepare to meet the sun tomorrow from your friends here at Camp Fun Maker and all we hear is Danger. Danger. Tornado. Tornado. Prepare to meet your maker. <laughs> so I heart camping. <laughs> oh, do you rent videos anymore? Does anybody do that? At the store? I don't do that anymore. I mean, I do it off the internet now. That's kind of nice, but the, our video store in our town is a little bit sad. You get the right case, but it was usually the wrong video in the case. <laughs> that can ruin date night, actually. Because <laughs> my wife would send me to the video store. I said, get something we both like. N none of this science fiction stuff. Get something we both like, something with royalty in it. So I got Alien, because it's got a queen in it. <laughs> But that was a nice compromise. If you haven't seen the movie Alien, you know, the alien takes over your body and leaps out of your stomach, you know. I thought, this is gonna be great. She's gonna love it. <laughs> I got it home, I pop it in without looking. It was your first trimester of pregnancy home educational video. <laughs> and I was very upset, but I felt worse for the pregnant woman who got the video that I wanted to rent. <laughs> I hope she's okay. She said, my wife said, we should get a cat. Why? <laughs> Our lives are not complete. What if I don't want our lives to be complete? <laughs> we should get a cat anyway. Okay, you pick it out, dear. You know, not everyone is gifted at picking out a cat. <laughs> She came home bleeding profusely down her arm. I said, what happened to you? She said, a kitten bit me. 
I said, ah, oh, what did you do to it? She said, I brought it home <laughs> to love. Can you help me get it out of the back seat? It's a little feisty. <laughs> this thing hunted us. <laughs> you, you ever flick your hair back like that? Think it would die for your neck? If you wiggled your toes, you'd find them under the couch later. <laughs> Our poor children would lie in bed at night. Daddy, is there a monster under my bed? I'm like, yes, don't let your feet touch the ground. <laughs> Try to survive your mother <laughs> how do you discipline a cat how do you discipline a cat we tried a spray bottle she just thought it was a drink just ah, ah. so the vet said give the cat value value for the cat have you ever tried to force feed pills to lucifer <laughs> i went to the er twice then the vet said, get the cat spayed. Very painful surgery, but it will take care of the problem. Get her spayed. So I got the cat spayed. It didn't help at all. I am not proud of this, but I had him do it again. <laughs> After the third time. I'm not proud of this either, but I gave the cat to my in-laws. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, you guys are so much fun. I love you guys. Ah, like I said, I'm very happy to have a wife. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. My sister thought she needed to step in when I was, you know, living at home there. She said, I'm setting you up on a blind date. I said, why? She said, I'm tired of looking at your face. <laughs> you need my help. I'm like, <laughs> what can you tell me about the girl? <laughs> All she would say is she had a wonderful personality. I said, good enough for me. <laughs> so the day of the date came, and this is going to sound like a non sequitur, but this is really kind of important to what I'm about to tell you. My dad moves pianos for a living, and I was helping him move a piano the day of the date and change the dolly out from under the piano for another one. The dolly broke, and it crushed my foot. So when I was walking up to her door, I had the most painful foot, and I was just grimacing as I walked up to her door. <laughs> that was the first part that went wrong. The second was I had a can of red cream soda in my hand, which, do you remember the 80s? We loved red cream soda pop. Anything with fizz and dye, we were so excited about that. <laughs> and it was a half-empty can. I thought, I don't want to be holding this when I meet this girl. That'd be tacky. So I, I'll get up to the door. I'll slam down the soda as fast as I can, throw the can in the bushes, because that's how we recycled aluminum back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, you know try to get any air out that might have developed. Knock on the door, meet the girl with the nice personality, and get on with our lives. That was my plan. And I got up to the door, and it didn't seem like anyone was home. And okay, and I started slamming down the soda a little too fast. You know, it's burning, tears are going down my eyes, but I'm getting it done. And I hear a click, and I turn, and there the door opens, and there she is, the girl with a nice personality, and she's stunningly gorgeous, which I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> Have you ever had a panic attack in front of someone? <laughs> and tried to pretend you weren't. It's just you vibrating, just kind of looking at me. She said, hello. I shifted my weight to my bad foot. And what came out was, ah, 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 ah. How's it going? That's when her dad came up to investigate what was taking his daughter out. I said, you all right there, son? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And like an idiot, I started drinking the soda again. <laughs> he said, were you in a fight? Why are you limping like that? I said, and I quote, oh, I got hurt when I was changing my dolly. <laughs> when I heard the words that had just come out of my mouth, I shot red cream soda out of my nose. I was wearing white jeans at the time, like, Merry Christmas, everyone! I don't know why she went on the date. I think it was just morbid curiosity. 
she wanted to talk to me, I had soda burning in my sinuses. So I went, I hope they're having a good time. <laughs> Have you ever lost hope? <laughs> I did. Here it was, it was this beautiful creature, and we had nothing in common. She was smart. She was sophisticated. She didn't have food on her clothes. <laughs> you got to have something in common. We had nothing, and I lost hope. But at the pizza place, I said something kind of funny, and she shot Dr. Pepper out of her nose. <laughs> We've been married for 24 years. She is so happy. <laughs> like I mentioned, we have four kids now, so we've gone to Lamaze four times. To me, that was the hardest part about the whole experience, was Lamaze class. They don't pull any punch punches, do they? We're gonna see a film. I'm like, all right, how bad could it be? It's our first day, you know. <laughs> Caesarean section. A cut above natural childbirth. You know, cesarean, you're cutting through to get the baby, you know. I'm not a doctor, but isn't that hard on women? I think it's harder on the baby, though. Because when you're born the right way, the way you're supposed to be born, I think that's such a slow process that I think the kid thinks it's his idea. I wonder what's down here. A door. <laughs> when you're born cesarean section, it's not slow at all. I mean, you're in the womb, you're in the room. <laughs> Imagine how horrible it would be if it happened to you. You know, you're the baby relaxing in a nice warm jacuzzi. Oh, that's me. And suddenly the roof opens up, a giant hand grabs your head, yanks you out of the building, you turn to see a masked giant with a knife. <laughs> That's a bad day. <laughs> but that wasn't even the worst part. It was the small group class discussions. We're going to talk about pregnancy issues. There was a nurse at a whiteboard, nine of us in a semicircle around the nurse. Snow is falling in northern Minnesota, from where I'm from. Snow is falling. It's the middle of June. <laughs> Today, class, we're going to talk about the proper color of amniotic fluid. I'm like, do we have? <laughs> Haven't we suffered enough? <laughs> Please be quiet. It needs to be clear. Amniotic fluid needs to be clear. And she starts talking about all the colors it shouldn't be. I'm turning all those colors. <laughs> but not my wife, because pregnant women are amazing. She's watching this gross presentation, drinking a five-gallon thing of ice water, like it's no big deal. But pregnant women can be clumsy. And she dropped that ice water right between her knees, just... <laughs> And I didn't see what happened. I'm like, her water broke! It just broke! And the class freaked out. They're like, ah! Is it clear? It's got ice chips in it! Which is typical for Minnesota children, so. You guys have been so much fun. God bless you. Thank you so much.